All right, good evening. Hello. Welcome, Saha family, to another Wednesday night yoga. Uh, tonight, I am going to invite you to have some props. So I suggest having two blocks and a strap handy. If you don't have a strap, you can always go ahead and use a belt or a towel, a t-shirt, anything you have uh, that will kind of serve a purpose here. And we'll start off finding a comfortable seat. I'm gonna go ahead and place a block underneath my sit bones. This is just going to create an anterior tilt of the pelvis, helping the spine to naturally align. So go ahead and get settled in. Maybe take a moment to roll out the shoulders, maybe adjust your seat. And start to settle in. Let's go ahead and take some deep cleansing breath. Inhaling through the nose, and filling up the belly, the chest, and filling even the collarbones lift. And then as you exhale, open mouth, let it all go. Let's do that three more times. Inhaling deeply, filling that lower chamber of the lungs and the middle, and all the way up to the top. And then exhale, release. Finding two more cycles here. Find your own unique rhythm, your own pace. From this space, begin to become aware of the points of the body in contact with your mat or with your block. If it resonates with you, begin to visualize roots at the base of your spine, connecting to the earth below, or perhaps a pillar of light maybe even a plot. So connecting to the earth energy, allow yourself to ground into this space. And as you connect to the earth, feel your energy becoming stabilized and center. And take a moment here to call back your energy. And feel free to repeat these words in your mind after me. I call back my energy from all spaces and places, timelines, dimensions, and realities. I reclaim my sovereignty. I call my power back to me. And give yourself a moment here to just Feel that energy starting at the base of the spine, all the way up to the crown of the head. And staying connected to the earth below us, feeling that support 
support will begin to flow. We'll go ahead and link the eyes open. Let's interlace the palms. Go ahead and press them up and over the crown of the head. Take a big Releasing that bind with the hands. We'll bring the palms down to the knees and start to warm up the spine by drawing some circles. And feel free to make these circles small and quick or maybe slow and wide. And then go ahead and switch directions. And coming to stillness, we'll reach the left arm up and alongside the ear, finding a side body stretch. Go ahead and keep that arm lifted. And we'll take a moment to kind of squish in to that forearm, just letting all of that fluid drain down towards our lymph nodes. And let's go ahead and rub around all those lymph nodes in that underarm area. Just inviting in some circulation. And then go ahead and circle those shoulders. We'll switch it out. Left palm finds the mat, right arm reaches up and over lateral side bend. Try to keep your heart open. See if you can direct that chest up towards the ceiling. Finding a nice deep stretch here. And then we'll inhale back up high. Keep that arm lifted and go ahead and find some squishes once again into that forearm. Maybe circle the wrist a few times. Then we'll start to take it down towards that underarm area, getting into all of those lymph nodes. Maybe rub some circles around that subscapularis. And then we'll release, go ahead and circle the shoulder. And then we'll switch direction. Let's inhale, reach and rise, throw tall through the spine. As you exhale, find a seated twist. So taking that left palm across the midline over to the right. Allow your spine to grow taller as you inhale. And with your exhale, see if you can take your gaze to look over that right shoulder. And then coming back to center, reach and extend those arms up high, and then take it over to the left. So planting that left palm behind. And using that right hand to create a little bit of traction as you inhale, grow tall. And then as you exhale, sink a little deeper into that twist, bringing it out. And then we'll return to center, taking hold of our strap. We're going to work on bring some mobility into the shoulder girdle. So we want to take that strap and have it uh, completely open and bringing those palms a little bit wider than the shoulder. And you can play with the, uh, with the intensity of this movement by bringing your palms in closer together or further apart. But I want to invite you to keep them nice and wide. So nice and wider than the shoulders. And we'll start to move as we inhale. We'll reach the strap up 
and over and then behind, just to the point where the elbows start to bend. And if you're not able to quite get there, then you might want to widen your stance with the hands. Or if it's pretty easy for you to take it all the way back, maybe bring it in closer so you can feel it deeper open. So take some time to adjust. And then we'll start to move with our breath. So as we inhale, reaching the strap up. And then exhale, bringing it. Inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, bring it to the front of the body. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, take it back. Keep it going, moving with your breath. We'll find three more cycles here. Last round. And this time, as we bring the strap back, I want you to pause and hold, feeling a deep opening in the chest, in the pectoralis. And it might feel good to kind of bend at the elbows a little bit. Really try to focus your breath, breathing into that heart chakra. Anahata. Reversing those rounded shoulders, all those hours that we spend in front of the screen or at a steering wheel, opening into the front of the body. And we'll inhale, go ahead and reach those arms up high and we'll drop the right arm over to the mat. Bringing back to center, go ahead and push it out. Feel free to explore a little bit here. It might feel nice to maybe draw some wide circles. Just listening into your body, maybe just taking it back and forth, side to side. Finding two more cycles of breath here. Coming back up right, we'll set our strap off to the side. Once again, growing tall through the crown of the head, we'll drop the right ear over to the right shoulder. An option to keep that left palm grounded on the knee or maybe extend it out at a 90 degree angle, finding a deep relaxed hold. between that left shoulder, that left ear, between. And we'll start to angle the chin towards the right shoulder. So almost as if we're looking at our imaginary jeans pocket. So we're getting into the SPM, sternocleal mastoid that front of the neck muscle. I like to add a little traction with my palm, so feel free to try this. Grabbing hold of the side of the head. You don't want to crank the neck if you're using that right hand. Just adding a tiny, tiny bit of
And then we'll start to release, drawing that chin towards the chest. And then take that left ear over towards the left shoulder. And once again, you have the option to keep that right palm grounded or extend it out long at 90 degrees, lengthening, deepening that line of pull, creating space between that right shoulder, that right ear. We tend to hold a lot of tension in the neck and the shoulder. So here is your invitation. Let some of that go. Allow the breath to assist you. And then we'll start to angle that chin towards the left shoulder. Feel free to get that left palm involved, maybe reaching for the side of the head, adding just a tiny bit of weight. And then releasing once more. We'll start to find some full circles this time. So check in, make sure that you are sitting up tall and straight. Maybe take a moment to roll those shoulders up and back. And we'll start to drop that chin towards the chest. And bringing one ear to the shoulder. And then the other. Finding some half circles, rolling from shoulder to shoulder. Working out any kinks. And if it feels good, maybe take that head all the way back, pushing it into the throat. Bringing some full circles. Go ahead and switch direction. And coming back up the right. Look. Come on to our hands and our knees. So finding a tabletop position, stacking shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. We'll start to pulse with the breath through some cups and cow. As you inhale, drop your belly, allow your gaze to look up. As you exhale, round and tuck the tailbone, press the mat away from you, arch into the spine. Inhale. There are any organic movements that your body might be craving here in this tabletop position, please feel free to take some time to explore. Maybe circling the hips, maybe finding some side body stretches, listening to your intuition. Allow your body to guide you. Go ahead and even out the sides if you need. We'll all land back in a tabletop position, finding a neutral spine. From 
here we'll start the toes as we lift the hips downward facing dog and sending those heels down towards the back of the mat see if you can angle that tailbone up high towards the ceiling and let your head hang heavy you take it yes Continuing to let go of tension in the neck. And if it feels good, pedal out the feet, bending one knee and then the other. Again, to step the feet forward, just about one step each, shortening our seat. And we'll find a twist. Go ahead and take that right hand to the outside of the left ankle. Grab hold of that ankle and see if you can pull your head underneath that arm. And then we'll switch it out. Right palm signs the mat. Go ahead and take that left hand to the outer right ankle. And then once again, try to pull that head under the arm. Bring it nice, deep stretch. It can feel good to bend that opposite left. And making our way back into that shortened dog. Go ahead and walk those feet up to the top of the mat. Uh, hang here in our forward fold. So feel free to let the belly rest on the sides. Maybe grab onto opposite elbows, or you can interlace the palms behind the back. Letting everything hang heavy. Allow gravity to take hold. Create space in between each and every vertebra. And then releasing the bind with the hand. We'll slowly start to make our way all the way up to Tadasana, standing mountain pose. Feeling into the feet, maybe rock side to side, forward and back. Find your center of gravity here. And start to engage your bandhas. Creating that root lock in the lavanda. And creating that core block, the Uriyama Vanda, even a slight tuck of the chin, that Jalandahara block. And we'll inhale, reach the arms up and over the crown. As you exhale, swan dive forward, fold, flat back. Inhale, half lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold and release. We'll step that right foot back long, finding a low lunge. Inhale, reach your arms up and alongside the ears. And sinking into this left hip. Start to find a twist. So let's go ahead and float the left arm behind. Allow your gaze to look back towards that left. And we'll inhale, lengthen, exhale, palms find the mat, start to straighten into that left leg, finding our half flex, Ardha Hanumanasana. You might want to shimmy that foot forward or maybe walk the palms back. Ideally, our shoulders stack over the wrists. And check in with your hips. You want to make sure that they are nice and square. 
From here, we're going to find a similar twist. We're really bringing it out tonight. So we'll plant that right palm under the shoulder. Inhale, lift the left arm. And see if you can drop that left hip back just a tad. You should be feeling this all along the lateral side of that left hamstring. So feeling it the IT band, the back of the lateralis. And from here, we'll start to release, bending into that front knee. Go ahead and tuck those back toes, step it back, and let's bring things up. And from here, let's ripple forward, finding our first plank pose. Getting really active in the palm, spread those feet nice and wide. Press the mat away from you. Even round into the shoulders. And we'll start to lower our bellies all the way down to the mat. As you inhale, make your way up to the side. So elbows can bring into the shoulders, opening into that heart space. Allow your gaze and body to be neutral. And looking at your feet in front of you. And it's always an option in this posture to. Bring the feet out wide. If you feel any discomfort or maybe even some pinching in that low back, you can always create a little more space in between the feet. And from here, we'll start to release, lowering down, pressing into the palm, make your way back to downward facing. And walking those feet up towards the hands. We'll inhale, half lift, shine the collarbones forward. Exhale, fold and release. And then inhale, reach and rise. And drawing those palms right down the midline. Keep the cycle going. Inhale, lift. Exhale, with a flat back, forward fold. Inhale, half lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold, and release. Then we'll step that left leg back, finding that low lunge, dropping the left knee to the mat. And bending those hips back just a tad. You want to lengthen that tailbone down to the mat, and then start to sink into that right knee. Inhale, reach the arms up. Really lengthen here, breathe deep. And we'll start to twist. So floating that right arm back behind, allow your gaze to look back towards that right knee. And then reaching those arms up, we'll float them down to frame that right leg, straightening into the right knee. Flex those toes as you send the hips. And checking in with those hips and level them off. And we'll twist once more. So keeping that right palm down on the mat. We start to extend the left arm out to the Bring that palm back down. Begin to bend into the right knee. Tucking those back toes. Step it all the way back. Downward facing dog. Pedal out both knees. Bending one knee and then the other. Maybe shake that hip. Yes. Shake it no. Bending the knees, look up towards the hands, make your way up top of the mat. Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, release. And we'll reach and rise. Sahasa. Bring those palms all the way down. Inhale, keep that cycle 
inhale going. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to half lift, and lengthen. Exhale, plant the palms, step it back, plank pose. Option to drop the knees or keep them lifted as we lower down, chaturanga, keep those elbows pressing close to the wrist. And we'll inhale your choice up dog or cobra. And then exhale, make your way to downward facing dog. From here, extend that right leg up high to the sky, sink the left heel down closer to the mat. Maybe take a moment to spin some circles into the ankle. That lots of lymph nodes in our ankles too, so this is a great way to promote that lymphatic drainage. Increasing our immunity. We'll exhale, draw that knee towards the nose. See if we can give it a kiss. Working that core and then step it all the way through. Rise up high lunge. And from here, we'll start to twist once again. So floating that right arm behind, open out wide. Allow your gaze to look back at that right hand. Exhale, lift and then we'll float that left arm down, finding a revolve lunge. And then bringing that right palm to frame the foot, go ahead and step it back, plank pose. Moving through that vinyasa, your choice to drop the knees or maybe even skip it all together. We'll all meet in our downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up high to the sky. Sink that right heel down closer to the mat. Maybe take a moment to spin some circles in that left ankle. Promoting that lymphatic drainage, helping our body out. Then exhale, draw that left knee towards the nose. Pause and hold. See and you give it a smooch. And then step it all the way through. And then reach and rise. Anjali Asana. And we'll start to open it out, putting that left arm behind. Allow your gaze to look back to the left. And we'll float that right palm down to the mat. Finding that revolve lunge. And then bring that left palm to frame the foot. Step it forward, right foot meets the left. And we'll inhale, reach and rise. As you exhale, make it low. Uttakasana, chair pose. Bring some weight into the heels and the ball of the feet. And you sink a little lower. And we'll inhale, straighten those legs. Exhale, the flat back forward fold. Inhale, find the half lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold and release. Go ahead and step that right foot back long. As you inhale, reach and rise. High lunge. And finding that revolve twist, we'll start to flip the left palm back, allowing that gaze to look back towards the left. Option to stay here or start to exalt that pose of reaching up and back, allowing that left hand to grab hold of the right side. And then we'll open it up to warrior two. Take a moment to adjust the feet. Ideally, we have a nice straight line with our heel, the front foot to the arch of the back foot. Extending those arms wide, sink low into that left knee. Find the integrity of your warrior.
And we'll start to flip that palm, reverse, reach it up and back. And then exhale, cartwheel those palms, bring the foot. Step it all the way back, plank pose. Option to float through that vinyasa or skip it. You do you, do what your best in your body in this moment. We'll all meet in our downward dog. And looking up towards the tops of the hands, hop or float, or walk, top of the mat. We'll all reach and rise. And keeping that cycle going, seeing it low. Utkatasana. Starting that chair pose. And adding on, we'll find a twist. So let's go ahead and take that left elbow to the outside of the right knee. You can stay here, or maybe start to spread those wings, twisting even deeper. And then coming back to center. Inhale, reach. Exhale, forward. Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, fold and release. Stepping the left foot back long, we'll find our high lunge. Reaching those arms alongside the ears. Find your balance here. And once you feel steady, we'll start to twist. So we'll float that right arm behind, left arm press forward. See if you can take your gaze back, look at those right fingertips. And then reach it up and back. And we'll open it out, warrior two. So keeping that stem in the right knee. Try to find that heel to arch alignment, extending those arms wide. And reversing that warrior, go ahead and flip the right palm, reach it up and back. And we'll exhale, cartwheel the palms to frame the foot. Stepping it forward, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale to release, reach and rise. And then sink those hips low, finding that chair pose. Make it awkward. <laughs> sink nice and low into those hips. And we'll start to twist it out, heading to the left. So we'll take that right elbow and aim to bring it to the outside of the left side. So that doesn't quite happen, no worries. Just finding a gentle twist. And again, option to keep those palms together or maybe start to spread the point. And we'll begin to bring those hands back to our center, coming back to our traditional chair pose, and then reach and extend as you exhale, swan dive forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold and release. Step it back. Moving through that vinyasa if you choose to do so. And we will all meet once again in our downward dog. Please begin to reach that right leg up high to the sky once more. As you exhale, draw that knee towards the neck. As you inhale, take it back. And then we'll exhale. Go ahead and take that knee to the outside of the right elbow. Inhale, kick it back. Exhale, crisscross. So 
Take that knee over to the left elbow. Drop in the midline. Inhale, kick it back. And then exhale, knee to nose. And step it through. High lunge. Go ahead and float that right arm back, heading into the twist. Allow your gaze to look back. And then we'll inhale, reach. And then with your next exhale, coming back to center, open it up, warrior two. And settle into your warrior pose. Setting those arms up wide. And let that right palm exalt your warrior, reach up and back. Let's straighten into that front knee. And then as you exhale, start to reach the ribs low over that hip bone. You might not happen, but it's the motion that we're going for. As we head into Trikonasana, I will pose. You can always use a block for this posture, or you can bring that hip bone to lift in. We'll stack the arms, creating a straight line from fingertip to fingertip. And from here, begin to reach and lift, revert. And exhale, bring that right palm down to the side. And we're going to square the hips off to the front of the mat while still keeping that triangle stance. But I like to bring my back foot in just a bit here. We're going to head into a revolved triangle. So we'll extend that left arm up alongside the ear keeping those hips square to the front of the mat. And then as we exhale, we'll float that left palm either to the inside of that right ankle or the outside, your choice. A block works well too. And then once again, finding a straight line from fingertip to fingertip. And you should really feel this on the outside of that right hip. We're stretching in to all of those lateral muscles along the quads and hamstrings. And then taking that right palm to the hip. We're gonna challenge ourselves tonight with a revolved Ardha Chandrasana, so a revolved half moon. So I'm gonna take my block and I'm going to place it about a foot in front of my foot <laughs> and reaching that hand towards the block I'll start to lift that back leg and reaching that right arm deepening that twist feel the strength of that right hip opening in to that right hip socket And breathe deep. Finding a little isometric action here in that right leg, feeling strength. Wow, I'm getting a good stretch. Yoga is the does it all. <laughs> and then we'll slowly start to make our way back into that revolved high lunge. So roll with me here. We're gonna float those left toes and the ball of the feet back, keep the back heel lifted. Reach that right arm back and then reach that left arm up and towards the ceiling. And then go ahead and cartwheel the palms down, stepping it back, find that plank pose. Option to move through that vinyasa or skip it and we will meet in the lower dog. And please inhale, extend that left leg up high to the sky. And as you exhale, draw that knee towards the nose. 
Round into the spine. Inhale, kick it back. And then exhale, take that knee to the outside of the left elbow. Pause. See if you can lift that knee higher. And then kick it back. <laughs> and then exhale, send it over to the outside of that right elbow. Pause and hold. Crunch it in. Send it up and back. And then exhale, knee to go. Rise up, find that high lunge. And we'll start to revolve. So floating that left arm behind. Allow your gaze to go back. And then reverse with that right palm. Reach it up and back, left hand find that back. And then go ahead and exhale, open it up. Warrior two, take a moment to adjust your footing, find your stable foundation here. Spreading those arms wide. Sink deep into that left leg. Let's see, lift that left palm. Exalt your warrior, reach up and back. And we'll straighten into that left knee, reaching those arms towards that wall in front of you. Try to shimmy those left ribs over the hip bone, and then start to sink low in that Trikonasana triangle pose. Always an option to use a block. Wherever you're at in this pose, imagine that your entire back body is flush against a wall. Nice and flat. And maybe play with floating those left fingertips up and off of the mat. So engaging the oblique, sinking into the side body, the core. And from here, we'll inhale, reach it up and back. Find that side body stretch. And then we'll float. That left palm down to the side, wearing off the hips to the front of the mat. You might want to step the feet a little bit closer. We'll reach that right arm alongside the ear, making sure those hips are nice and square. And then as you exhale, revolve your triangle. Float that right palm to the inside of the right ankle or the outside, your choice. And then start to extend that left arm. Once again, feeling into that lateral chain along the left side, finding space. Letting go. Shaking this IT band past this laterality. And then floating into that revolved half moon pose. We'll start to reach that right palm about a foot in front of our foot. Keeping those hips nice and square, nice and level. We'll start to open out the whole left. So extending the left arm. Welcome to Shake Shake here. <laughs> Shaking is healing. And try to stay active in that back leg, flexing into that foot. We've got a lot going on in the front leg, so it's easy to forget about the back one. <laughs> and breathe into that lateral line. And we'll head back into that revolved high lunge. So floating that right foot behind, allow the left arm. Reach back, allow your gaze to look back towards that. 
And then we'll cartwheel the palms, stepping it back. Option to move through that vinyasa or feel free to skip. And we will all meet in our downward dog. <laughs> From our dog, go ahead and drop the knees down to the mat. Anahatasana, so finding puppy pose or heart melting pose. Start to reach the arms forward and allow the forehead to land on the mat, or you can tuck the chin to look up towards the top edge of your mat. Your choice. We're opening air into that heart space. We'll start to head back into our sphinx pose. So bringing those elbows and the knees to shoulders, create a solid foundation for yourself here. And shine the heart forward. Head up, heart open. And lowering that chest all the way down to the mat. Feel free to make a pillow with the hands. And bend into those knees. Bend the feet side to side like one little white. We'll lengthen into those legs, getting into the shoulders a little bit more. Go ahead and Extend that right arm long behind you or alongside you. So we want to have that thumb lined up with the nose. And we'll plant that left palm bending at the elbow, allowing our gaze to look towards the left. Bend into the left leg and then roll onto that right shoulder. So that left foot becomes like a little kickstand. Breathe deep. Coming back to center, go ahead and switch it out, extending that left arm long. Check in, make sure that that thumb lines up with that nose. We don't want any weird angles here. In this pose. Bending in to that right leg, plant the right palm, and then roll on to that left shoulder. Please begin to make your way back to center. And we'll simply flip ourselves over and onto the back. Take a moment here to curl up into a little ball, up and asana. Tug your knees in, rock and roll side to side. Finding an inversion of your choice. If you like to join me, you can find a simple waterfall pose extending the feet to the sky. Another option is to find a plow pose, a shoulder stand, happy baby, a handstand, a headstand. So many choices. As long as you are reversing that blood flow. You are doing it.
wherever you're at with your inversion, think slowly and mindfully. Being so careful with that cervical spine if you are in a plow or shoulder fan. We'll start to make our way all the way down to our mat. Planting the soles of the feet. We'll take hold of a block. Finding a supported bridge, we want to make sure that our knee and our feet are lined up with our hips. And our fingertips should be just barely grazing the back of the heel. And then as we inhale, we'll start to lift the hips, grabbing hold of that block. And I'm going to suggest bringing it to that middle setting, and we'll place it right at the sacrum. So, right at the base of the spine, just above the tailbone, feeling a nice stretch in front of the body. Feel yourself being supported by that block. Give yourself permission to let go. I like to imagine the block as a drain. So imagine tension or anything else that is ready to go. Imagine it draining out of that tailbone down into the block. Start to get active in our feet. As we press into the mat, lift the hips. Move that block off to the side, slowly lower down one vertebra at a time. Allow the tailbone to come right back. And we'll take a moment to touch the knees together, allowing the feet to come back width apart. So bringing everything back to the midline. And let's send those knees side to side, the windshield wiper. And we will extend our arms out wide to keep finding a supine twist. Draw the knees in towards the chest. And then as you exhale, begin to drift them to the left, keeping that right shoulder connected to the mat below. You want to keep this right shoulder in contact to protect that spine. And then gaze can look up towards the ceiling, or maybe you want to deepen the twist and look over to the Please inhale, drifting the knees back to center. We'll extend that right arm long. Heading in to our twist, send those knees to the right. Allow your gaze to look over. Drawing those knees back to center. And please take a moment here to check in with yourself, check in with your body. If there are any final movements or any final postures that your body is craving, any 
anything that you might need to feel complete in your practice, please feel free to explore. And once you feel complete, begin to make your way into your final resting posture, Shavasana. So allowing those feet to come to the corners of the mat. And extending those arms out along the side. And I encourage you to have those arms up and open receiving position here. Just once again, connecting to the earth below. Feel the points of the body that are in contact. Feel yourself being lovingly held and supported by the earth beneath you. Give yourself permission and find stillness here, allowing the body, the time, and the space to integrate the magic. Please begin to invite movement to the body, wiggling into the fingers and toes, the ankles and the legs, and reaching the arms long over the top. And a big morning stretch from the tips of the fingers. And drawing those knees in towards the chest, begin to roll over to one side, finding a moment's rest in handle pose. And here in this newborn baby position, I want to invite you to bring to mind, bring to heart, whatever it is that you are feeling grateful for today. And allow this sense of gratitude to wash over your entire being. And as you begin to press yourself up 
so comfortable to you. May this resonance of gratitude be carried with you into your evening, into your day, into the rest of your week. And we'll close together finding a comfortable seat, rooting down through those ribs. And let's inhale, circle sweep the arms up and over the crown. Feeling in our practice, draw the palms right down the midline through the heart. And we'll close with a deep cleansing breath. Inhale through the nose. And exhale, high out the mouth. I want to thank you so much for your presence this evening. From my life to yours. Thanks again for showing up to your mat. It's always an honor to guide you. Have a beautiful week.